Hello, today we're going to be solving for a variable and we're going to be doing this in two-step transformations. To be able to do that, we just need to quickly recall what we did in the previous lesson about one-step transformations. Just a quick review, when we solve for one-step transformations like this one, what we do is we need to isolate our variable using what we call the inverse operations. This is for times x is equal to 12, so we do the opposite or the inverse of multiplying, which means that we will divide both sides by 4. When we do this, the 4 right here cancels out with this 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times x will leave us just with x and then 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So that'll be our final answer there, x is equal to 3. So that was, and if you need a review on that, there are one-step um, transformations. There's a video on those. But what we're going to do today is what happens when you get a little bit bigger of an equation like this, 3x plus 4 equals 19. When you get an equation like this, you're going to use the same steps um, using the property of equality. You do something to one side of the equation, you do it to the other. But we're going to do the same steps so that we can try and get that x by itself. So here's our equation, 3x plus 4 equals 19. We're going to start out by subtracting 4 from both sides. That gets rid of these, the 4 and the negative 4. They'll cancel each other out because 4 minus 4 is 0. When you get rid of the 4s on that side, you're just left with 3x. 19 minus 4 is 15. And now you're left with a one-step transformation where we'll divide both sides by 3 like we saw on that previous slide. The 3's cancel out, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1 times x leaves us with just x, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that, those are the steps for isolating a variable or solving for a variable when you have two steps or multiple transformations um, that you're going to be doing. And so basically there's two ways to look at it. One, you can look at it as you start far away from the variable and you move closer into the variable. Notice with this one here, we could have, you know, tried dividing it by three, but what we do instead, we get rid of the things that are farthest from the variable and work our way into getting the variable by itself. So we start far away from the variable, work our way into the variable, and at the end we, we get rid of the things that are, far, that are closest to the variable. Another way of looking at it is that you do the opposite of the order of operations. So when you're getting rid of stuff or isolating your variable, you do adding and subtracting first, and then multiplication and division would get done second. So that's two ways of looking at it. We're going to go through several sample problems and you'll see this, this pattern emerging. And we do the adding, subtracting first to get rid of it, multiplication and division. We're always using the opposite of the order of operations. Let's go ahead and solve a couple of these. So with this one here, 3x minus 12 equals 13. The opposite of subtracting 12 would be to add 12. So we're going to add 12 to both sides of this equation, and that will give us 12, negative 12 plus 12 equals 0, so they cancel out and we're just left with 3x is equal to 13 plus 12, and 13 plus 12 gives us 25, all right? And now what we're going to do is take both sides and divide them by 3, all right? These two cancel each other out. And x is equal to, well, it's kind of a funky looking x there, but x is equal to 25 over 3. Now, this one here, sometimes they'll, they'll work out so that they're not quite even like this one here. And we can reduce it down to a decimal or reduce it down to a mixed number. But at this point, um, we haven't really learned too much about fractions. So we could just leave the answer as 25 over 3. If you want to say 25 divided by 3, then you'll get that x is approximately equal to 8.3 repeated, which is fine, or 8 and 1 third, okay? So you can do that and, and kind of get an idea of that, but 
that's basically what we're going to be doing. I'll put that up here too. X is equal to 8 and 1 third if you're going to change it into a mixed number. But for the most part, um, you'll get ones that work out nice and evenly. Clearly this one didn't, but that's okay. All right, let's take a look at this one here. We've got x in a fraction, x over 12, plus 5 is equal to 17. I'm going to start out by subtracting 5 from both sides of this equation. Notice I'm starting farther away and then I'm moving into the variable, or I'm doing the adding and subtracting first, and then I'm going to do the multiplying, dividing later. P positive 5, negative 5, they cancel each other out. 5 minus 5 is 0. So I'm left with just x over 12 is equal to 17 minus 5, which is 12. All right. And if you recall from before, when you have a fraction, you would multiply times the denominator, and then they will cancel each other out. 12 times x over 12 means the same as the 12s are canceling out. It's 1 times x, which gives you x. 12 times 12 is 144. The great thing about these types of questions is that you can check your work. Um, so if we wanted to do a check over here, we could take the value x equals 144 and substitute that into our original equation. So 144 will go in where we see an x right here. 144 divided by 12 is 12. 12 plus 5 is 17. And we have ourselves a final answer. We can check our work, which is really nice with, with transformations. Let's do one more. 4a plus 3 is equal to 31. Again, we start with the addition and subtraction. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides of this equation. 3 minus 3 is 0. So I just have 4a on the left side. 31 minus 3 will leave me with 28. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 4. That will help me to isolate a by itself. And 28 divided by 4 is 7. So a is equal to 7. We can check our work again by saying 4 times a, which is 7, plus 3 equals 31. 4 times 7 is 28. 28 plus 3 is indeed 31. Whoa, just got dyslexic on you there for a minute. Hold on. There we go. All right. So 31 is equal to 31. And that's how we do multiple step transformations or two-step transformations. All right, just remember that you're trying to get the variable by itself, which is called isolating your variable. To do that, you do the opposite operation. The operation is addition, you would do subtraction. If it's multiplication, you do division. You always want to do the opposite operation to try and get that variable all by itself. And then you can always check by substituting the answer that you get back into the original equation.